Hey everyone, uh, today we're going to go over the dynamic amortization schedule module that I had just posted up on our website. This should be a fairly uh, short video. I'm just going to go over how to, how to use it and possibly go into some of the formulas to show more about how it's actually working. So in this module you have the ability to uh, model out towards uh, 360 months or 30 years. Um, you have the ability to select a balloon payment date and you can um, select for an interest only period before the loan begins to amortize. So in this current scenario we have a $10 million loan, we have a 30 year amortization period, we have a balloon payment on month 43, and we have the interest only period for 8 months. Additionally we've set our interest rate ceiling which is the max that the lender can charge us as the borrower. We have our interest rate forecast, and we have our interest floor, which is the minimum interest rate that the lender can charge us. And below that, we have our actual interest rate that's being charged. You can see we have a very um, simple formula that just says if the interest rate forecast row is greater than E18, which means if it's larger than the interest rate ceiling, then give us the interest rate ceiling. And if E19 is less than E20, which is the interest rate floor, then return the interest rate floor. And if not, then just give us the interest rate forecast. So row 21 is uh, going to give us our actual interest rate that's being charged to us in that month. And so below that, we have our row that's just tracking our time period over the loan. And then row 23 is an important row. It's, it helps calculate when our amortization period starts. It actually helps us um, in the payment formula to actually model when the, the loan begins to amortize and what the correct payment should be. And we're going to revisit these two rows, uh, row 23 and row 26, which is the amortization start and payment lines together in more detail after we go over the general basics of this model. Um, and so below that we have our date and then here in this um, whole white section underneath is our amortization schedule which has the beginning balance, payment, our interest rate, our principal payment due, and our ending balance. So currently in our inputs we have um, interest only period for eight periods and as you can see we have our payment formula just spitting out what the interest payment should be. And here's the verification just to show you that we have our beginning balance multiplied by our interest rate divided by 12 because this is a monthly payment over in uh, using an annual interest rate. Um, so we have eight months here. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight months that have no principal payments. And then once the interest only period is up, which is after the eight months, the loan starts to... Uh, calculate principal payments and the loan begins to be paid down according to um, the amortization schedule and the interest rate. So uh, before we dive into how that works, let's just move down the model and see what happens when we hit period 43, which is our balloon payment date. So once we hit 43, we have our balloon payment plus the interest and then our ending balance is zero because we have just paid off the loan. Now, uh, you can feel free to mess around with the inputs on your own time. But just, just to show you like a quick example, let's, let's change the interest only period to four months. You can see we now only have four months of interest and let's change our balloon payment to 100 months. And we can scroll down to uh, month 100 and you'll see that the balloon payment kicks in then. Now, one thing to take notice of is that the amortization period kicks in after uh, the interest only period. So, um, you know, most likely you won't be paying off your loan in 360 months, but if you want your loan fully amortized, for example, in month 360 and you have four months of interest only period, uh, you have four months uh, within your interest only period, then um, make sure you're putting in 300 56. So you're accounting for this uh, four months of interest only. And just real quick, one other thing to note is that if you want to make this a fixed rate uh, model, you want to forecast for a fixed interest rate, the, all you need to do is come into the interest rate forecast and 
just copy in the uh, same interest rate all the way through, and then you will you will have that uh, fixed rate module that you can plug into your own model. So that's pretty much uh, how to use this model. Um, and for the the geekier people among us, I'm now going to get into the formulas a little bit. So if you want to learn how this is actually functioning, uh, I'm going to get into that piece now. And so the only real sections I'm going to dive into to, to explain this is the, the payment row, which is row 26, um, and the amortization start row, which is row 23. And the reason I'm only going to go into these two rows is because um, everything else in this model is, is very easy to understand. Um, it's, it's, you know, every other row is referring to two or three cells at most. And this is the only row that is, is probably worth breaking out and understanding. Um, to, to, or at least explaining a little bit for those who are interested. So if you look at row 26 in a very generic way, we're asking it to do four things. We're asking it to either return an interest-only payment, which we have in these first four months. We're asking it to return a payment if we're amortizing the loan, which is month five up until month 99. Scroll out to 99. And if it's doing neither of those, we're asking it to give us a balloon payment, or if we've paid the balloon payment back and there's no more loan to be paid, we're asking this to calculate zero dollars in the payment section. So these are four criteria that we're asking this formula to calculate and return to us in proper order. So now let's dive into the actual formula up here and let's break down each component. And so we have our first if statement, which is saying, if um, cell E22 is equal to D15, and so if we look at what it's actually saying, it says if zero, I'm sorry, if two is equal to 100, then return E25, which is the beginning balance, times E21 divided by 12, which is the interest rate divided by 12. So in this first piece of this formula, we're asking if all the criteria is met for the balloon payment, give us the balloon payment. So let's scroll down to period 100 and see how this is qualifying. So we're saying if see if 100 CY22 equals D15100, that's a true statement, then give us the balance the beginning balance plus the interest payment on that beginning balance. And so that gives us $8,575,284. This breaks out our interest. This is our remaining principal. And that leaves us with a balance of zero dollars. All right, so that's the first component of this formula. Let's let's keep going um, through it and we'll, we'll decipher this a bit further. So let's take um, column L. And in column L, we know that this statement is not true. We know that L22 does not equal D15. And so it's not going to give us this formula. So we move on to the false section of the if statement. And let's come back to the if error formula for now. And so basically we're saying that if L22 equals D15, if that statement is false, then we have a, a, an additional question to ask really an additional if statement and the question is is L22 greater than D16 so let's say L22 here is 9 and D16 is 4 so this if statement is actually true L22 is greater than D16 and as a result our formula is returning the payment for when our loan is actually amortizing and now let's let's dive into this component a little bit and just just decipher it a little bit now this is a little more detailed um, in this model because we're using an adjustable rate mortgage now if this was a fixed rate mortgage and you just had an amortization schedule with a fixed rate uh, this would be a lot more straightforward and uh, maybe I will add a sheet to this model just to show you if, if you're someone who's unfamiliar with just a regular amortization schedule with a fixed interest rate I'll add a sheet here to show you how it differs and how much easier it is um, when using just the payment formula in, in that way. All right, so let's look at this payment formula. We have, um, you know, the payment function is broken out into three sections. You need to have the interest rate, 
uh, the number of periods until the loan needs to be paid off, and finally the present value. And so our interest rate's fairly straightforward. It's the current annual rate divided by 12. The number of periods is a little more challenging, and I'm not sure why I have these parentheses here. I guess this was uh, left over from a formula that I was previously uh, working this out. But anyway, um, so let's go through this. We have D14, which is 356 uh, minus L23. So L23 is actually 5 right now. And so, and that's plus 1. So basically what we're saying is that we have 356 months of, of this loan that amortizes. And right now we're actually on the fifth month of that, these 356 months. So we're doing 356 minus 5 plus 1. So that's 352. And so right now there is 352 periods left to pay back this present value of $9,935,016 with the interest rate of 3.52% divided by 12. And so that will return our, our proper interest rate. And let's um, simplify these uh, inputs just so we can verify that this is, this is working correctly. All right, so let's uh, change our amortization period to five. As you can see, we have five periods from when uh, the amortization period starts with one, two, three, four, five. And let's just investigate the, the number of periods. Again, we have D14, which is now five minus five plus one. So there's one period left to pay off the loan. So that gives us our total payment of $2,017,384. 5,900 of which is interest and the remaining is, is principal. And so now to keep going through the formula, let's move back to the interest only section. And since in the interest only section, we know that this statement is false. So we have G22, which is four. So four is greater than D16. This is a false statement because four equals four. Four is not greater than four. And so we go down to the false section of this uh, if statement. And so the false uh, formula is very straightforward. It's just give us the interest payment on the beginning balance. So G25 times G21 divided by 12. All right, so for the last piece of this formula, we're going to look at the if error statement. And so basically what this statement is saying is that if this entire if formula um, results in an error, then return the number zero. And now really, uh, I could have put it just within this true section of this if statement because really it's the payment function that's giving us the error. And let me show you um, exactly what's happening. Let's go out into cell M26 and let's take out uh, the if error statement. Okay, so as you'll see, we'll get this error, and, and the reason is, is let, let's dive into the payment section, and let's dive into the uh, number of periods section. So you'll see here we have D14. So D14 is 5 minus M23, which is 6, so that's negative 1 plus 1 is 0. And so you have this payment function trying to calculate a payment, but there is no periods. It's 0, and so it is forcing an error. Um, and so the if error statement is what helps to mitigate that. And so really that is the entire, um, I guess, the more complicated piece of this model. And as I said before, everything else is, should be fairly uh, self-explanatory. So I think that wraps up this video, and I hope you enjoyed it and you learned something from it. And as always, stay tuned for the next video. Take care.